Hey, what's going on everyone? It's been a little while since my last video. Uh, I've been recovering from surgery, but I'm excited to be back. And I'm excited to do this video on the Peruvian apple cactus. I'm gonna give you guys some basic care and some information on this really underrated cactus that we can grow here in the Sonoran Desert very easily. So I'll start off. So this, this cactus has a lot of different names. Um, some of the more popular names that I like are, of course, the apple cactus. That's not its real name. Its real name is like Census Peruvius or Census something with an R. I'm not. I'm not Latin. I'm not fancy. I'm. I'm. I'm a little redneck when it comes to that Latin stuff. But I also have heard it called the night blooming cactus. Um, it's a. It's a in the family of column cactuses, and it's actually native to South America. One of the cool things about this cactus is that it can grow anywhere from zone 8 to 11. So even in some of the more cold sensitive zones that you think cactus can't grow, they actually do fairly well. So in the Sonoran Desert, we're mainly zone 9A to zone 9B, a little bit of 10A. But for the most part, we're, we're right smack in the middle of the, the zone that these things do well in. So if you've been thinking about growing one, go for it. The hardest part is making sure that you get the right cactus. So you can go to a nursery um, and you'll see just tons and tons of different types of cactus. And you'll actually see quite a few column cactuses that what a column cactus is, is it means that it, it grows straight up and it'll actually have branches that come out. The saguaro cactus is not a columnar cactus because those cactuses, if an arm breaks off, you can't propagate that arm, it's dead. So it's more like a, a one size fits all cactus. These on the other hand, if a branch were to fall off and you let it dry, you could put that branch in some soil and it would grow roots and it would be a perfectly good cactus for you to start out with. That's actually what this was. Back in, uh, I think 2017, I ordered off of uh, eBay um, a night blooming cactus. It was uh, also in the parentheses said Peruvian apple cactus from Florida. I got it, it was about this big. I'll try to find some footage you put in the background here when we were doing our dragon fruit video, just seeing how small this is. So in the past four or five years, this thing has really took off. Um, it's basically as tall as me right now and I'm almost six foot, I'm like 5'10". Uh, so these things can grow very quickly. It's a very fast growing cactus. Um, when you plant them, um, I think everything appreciates a little bit of organics in the soil. But these things, I've seen people just put them straight in the dirt, no amendments, nothing, and they've been able to thrive. Cactus are notoriously good at using the little nutrients that are available to help them grow and mature. Um, like I said though, everything appreciates a little bit. So this was planted kind of underneath my acacia willow tree. So there's been a lot of organic matter falling on the ground over the years. And we have put a little bit of wood chips around it when I had my, my dragon fruit growing around this um, tree. But it's not necessary. You don't need to do it. Um, Watering's another step. So these are not a Sonoran Desert cactus. Prickly pear and uh, saguaro cactuses, choya cactus, they can all go for extended periods of time without any water. This cactus can go for an extended period of time as well, but it's not as resilient as those cactuses, so they do appreciate a little bit of supplemental water. I have this on the outskirts of my grass area, and they're able to get a little bit of water coming in from the sprinklers and just water that's in the air. Um, so aside from that, the only other thing that you might occasionally have a concern about is our, our, our cold spikes. You know, we do occasionally get a cold spike. Like I said, this is good down to zone, the low zone eight, the eight zone. So our nine should be fine, but we're kind of a special nine where occasionally we'll, we'll get some pretty good drops out here, especially where I live in Santan Valley where there's not a lot of houses out here yet. So one thing, one trick that we've learned to do um, on those really cold nights, it might sound silly. We just get a styrofoam cup from QT, place it over the top of this column and that protects it. 
doesn't get frostbit. None of the cactus in my neighborhood that I, I noticed that do this have, have had any issues. And some of them that don't do that actually get a little bit of frost tip on the top. It's nothing that's gonna kill it, but aesthetically it won't look as nice. So if you guys look at this, I'll zoom in. This sucker is nice. It has kind of a, a blue, bluish green tint to it. I think it, I think that they're one of the more appealing looking cactus colors that you can have. And they also produce these amazing little fruits. That's the whole point of why I'm, I'm talking about this. I try not to grow anything unless it gives me fruit. I guess I'm selfish that way. But these little fruits right here, they are delicious. Um, unlike some of the other cactus fruit that I've tried, you know, you've probably seen my saguaro video, you've seen my prickly pear video. Those cactus fruits do taste okay, but these taste freaking awesome. Uh, I will do a couple comparisons right now, comparing them to dragon fruit. So dragon fruit is also from Central and South America. They're from the Americas. Um, they have more of a vine that they grow on. They also bloom at night. You guys can see in on one side here, I've got my Peruvian apple cactus flowers. And on the other side, you'll see that I've got my dragon fruit flowers. You can see, although the size is slightly different, they are extremely similar. Um, and the similarities don't, don't end there. They actually, um, when, when the fruit is ripe and ready to be harvested, you will take them off and they will look very different. You know, dragon fruit are very, flamboyant and pretty and the uh, proving apple cactus although it's a nice pretty red they are actually kind of boring looking on the outside but when you cut them open I, I'd be hard-pressed to tell the difference between the two so the proving apple cactus and dragon fruit look very similar and their taste is very similar so I've had the Vietnamese white dragon fruit I've had a couple of the you know, red varieties that you'll get at the Asian market that don't really have a name, and those taste bleh to me. But the best tasting dragon fruit I've had is the yellow dragon fruit. Those taste delicious, and I find that the Peruvian apple cactus tastes just like those, except for their seeds are a little smaller. The yellow dragon fruit, for some reason, out of all the dragon fruit, has bigger seeds. They're a little less easy to eat. This is like the best of both worlds. The other thing is, you don't need another pollinator. I have no other Peruvian apple cactus anywhere near me, and this thing flowers and fruits. So it's a huge benefit to having this over a dragon fruit if you like that kind of flower, or like that kind of fruit. So it's like a nice dragon fruit substitute that in my opinion is way underrated. These things are grown throughout the world and nobody's really growing them for their fruit. They are growing them specifically for the way they look and they are beautiful so that is a reason to do it but underrated as far as fruit now just so you guys know these things can get humongous so you know there's people that let them grow like a tree there's people that have them grow out like a bush um actually was just recently reading a little bit about these just so that i could have the best accurate information for you and the tallest cactus in the world is actually the Peruvian apple cactus. Now, naturally, it would never be the tallest cactus because wind would blow it over. But in India, with scaffolding, they've actually built scaffolding around this specimen of Peruvian apple cactus, and it's like 138 feet tall. That'll rival any tree. So you guys could have that kind of cactus growing in, in your yard. They're very, very beautiful, and you can get tons and tons and tons of fruit on it. So it's very high on my list of recommendations for planting here in Arizona, especially in the Sonoran Desert, where you, you don't need as much water, you don't need as much care, you, you basically don't need the amendments that you need with some of these other trees and, and, and edibles, but they will produce and they will give you a sustainable amount of uh, fruit for you and your family every year. Um, the one shortfall, I'll say, especially with this little guy, he's actually leaning against a tree right now is that the roots didn't get a chance to develop um, enough to hold its weight and so this thing during the monsoon winds actually blew over and I, I'm using this to this tree to just support it until I get 
I don't really want to say scaffolding, but I'm going to stake it just to help it while the roots are getting uh, more developed and able to hold it. Now, if it does fall over and break in half, it's not the end of the world. How you propagate these things is very simple. You just cut a section that you want. It doesn't really matter where you cut it. You set that piece out for um, a couple days, like 10 days actually, and, and you let it dry. And then once it's dry, you can just stick it in some moist dirt. I would wait until springtime when it's starting to warm up a little bit and then roots will form quickly. You can actually do that with most cactus, but this one's just one that works really well and I've actually had experience doing it. Um, so if you know somebody who has a Peruvian apple cactus, unfortunately mine's not big enough to share yet, but you can get it and you can share it and you can give it to your friends once you've got it developed. It's just a great cactus to be able to, to spread around. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I really enjoyed making it and uh, Hopefully this video turns out so I don't have to do another one because I think it's like the fifth time I've tried to make this video. They just keep messing up. So we'll catch you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really means a lot to us. And uh, we'll catch you. We'll catch you later. Bye.